G'day, how you going? Ianapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. If you're new here, share, like, and subscribe, and check out the links in the description below, and plus my unique merchandise, something you can spoil yourself or a friend with. I want to get some uh, sizes on the canvas here in centimetres and inches before we get going, get them out the way. Some people like to know what size the bloody canvas board is, eh? So there they are, and um, also get some colours going up the screen there as well. And um, you can write them down if you want to know, or if you want to use the exact same colour I'm using. It doesn't have to be the exact same colour, so long as you've got something next to it. All right, that's enough for the intro. Let's get into painting. Come over here and I want to show you what we're doing, all right? Well, we've got some sky colours here, so we'll get these four colours, the Quinacridone Magenta. I'm going to use Cerulean Blue, Indian Yellow, and I've got a touch of grey just to make that blue more afternoon, getting to the evening, darker side, sunsetting side of the blue in the sky. Now, I first want to... Jeez, I've put so much of this craft paint down, don't I? Mix this craft paint with the retarder, and it acts as a good basis, a good foundation to blend your acrylic colours onto your canvas. It's marvellous. If you haven't tried this method, give it a go and you'll be bloody impressed. Now, I've masked my horizon line because I don't really want this going into the water side of it. And we'll just crisscross this into the sky there. I've got a bit of hair there, I'll move it. Oh, well, it won't let me now. There it is, it's a cat hair. Damn cats, love the cats so much, but um, their hair can be very volatile. Get all this pushed on. Now this is going to whiten the colours a bit as you put them onto the canvas as well, which is good. Now I'm just going to go left and right, there we go. Get them nice and beautifully brushed, stroked out of there. All right, I've cleaned my brush and I'll pick up the Indian Yellow. Now there's no retarder in this, it's just the Indian Yellow out of the tube. I love Indian Yellow because it's so deep and kind of hitting the orange side of the sky, I love it. And you want your glow over here or across the bottom, wherever. I just want it across the bottom because we're gonna have the beautiful ocean water there. So I wanna get this just across there like that and scootingly scoot it up in a roundabout scootingly way. There we go, nice and dark yellow down the bottom there, look at that. Now I'm just going to brush it with the tip of the brush to get it nice and stroked. Love it, too easy. Now I'm not even washing that brush, I'm going to pick up the quinacridone magenta. Okay, and we're going to start creating our reds and oranges within the sky. So we want to get some of this. I'm just trying something different just because I want to feel, you know, arty. I want to feel arty. So I'm just sort of stabbing and scooting that in there, loosely brushing it, I suppose, and get some up where the blue's going to go. That'll do. Now I'm just going to wipe that brush build up, the bulk off it. Okay, let's hope this works. And let's get this, just pull it through that yellow. There we go. Wipe your brush if there's too much building up. You don't want to put it where you don't want it. I don't want it all in the yellow, but I want some lineal strokes right across the yellow like that. Oh yeah, I'm liking that. Love it. Now I'll get that just done like that. There we go. All right, now I want to get some of my grey out of a tube. If you don't have a tube of grey, just mix some up. And I want to get this blue to that grey value, the afternoon sky colour ready to hit evening time of blue, okay? And the white that's up there is going to tint it as well. And I just want to start, see that blue? It's kind of a bluey grey, exactly what I'm looking for. 
get it all the way across the top pick up some more now this is starting to dry on me now it can start mixing with that magenta you'll get some sort of purples whatnots there we go over here a bit I don't want to bring it too much into the yellow and get any green in the sky otherwise we'll have to call our painting abstract there we go I'll just stroke that left and right I'll just get a bit more here because it's there we go let's get rid of that I had a feeling I didn't have too much retarder in the paint but I'll cope maybe a bit darker here as well just something to break it up all right okay I'm going to pick up the white titanium white from a tube now not that craft paint this stuff here and put on some clouds so I want something quite funky down here okay where's my tape there it is there so I want something reaching up from the horizon there it is it's pretty much like two hands coming up to cut the sky you know <laughs> that's what's going through my head there and probably something here there we go just let the see what this is just making the shapes that's it it made the shapes for me grab a blending brush and a rag and we want to start blending turmoil get the tops of that the oh see that i've done it too bloody much there my goodness let's start again let's put a bit more white back there hopefully it's not too contaminated oh, it's got red all in it let's i can come back to that now lightly does it ian lightly turmoil those clouds into the yellow there there we go beautiful have a rag with you so you can wipe the build up off your blending brush and just create turmoil within those clouds you're probably getting used to my wording now turmoil and it is exactly what it says you're adding turmoil look at that within the cloud layer where are we we're going to do the same here I'll turn the brush around actually so I can see we're getting turmoil there we're going to start to mossalizing it into that red there we go and then later on we can to mossalize it into the blue if that's a word it sounds good anyway now before my sky colors dry I'm, I've cleaned my fan brush and we want to add some more colors within the sky so I'm going to go about this corner now I'm just sort of creating whatever's going to happen within my sky I've stamped it on I didn't think about it and we just want to create lovely cloud sh shape colors and turmoil within this leave light areas bright areas and duller areas just put it on twist it like that see all the twisting movements they're just they're just making them clouds themselves okay onto that wet retarded surface and if there's any bits you feel that are a bit too messy you can play with them like that I'm just cleaning the brush and getting some more now this is quite an easy painting believe it or not you might look at it and think wow I can never do something like that but you can get something here just like that and we'll blend this and then I'll get up the top and if any of this feels too opaque looking in my eyes I will add the yumminess okay we'll get all here that's a bit too bright there but my paint's drying on me I've lost the window so let's just see what can happen when that happens okay we'll put something up here into the red and come up off the painting okay just like that bit of a bottom on there keep it lineal and start blending turmoil now see if anything the white I feel is sitting on the blue surface there the sky colors it's not really blending in too much and why that's happening is when I put that craft paint on I had a feeling I didn't have enough 
retarder in it and this is what's happening but I'll get there now I'm just putting some yumminess within these clouds just to break up the dullness and then we'll finish with the sky and get on with the bottom bit I might put something over here as well there we go just a bit Twisting it out, just sort of doing what I can with it. There we go. All right, that's pretty much all we need for the sky. We'll get the tape off and we can dry the horizon line area so we can put our water in along here okay so I'll just give that a bit of a quick dry there okay I've just dried this and I thought while I was drying it to just add something more wowy in the sky I picked up a pouncer a round sponge and we're going to put some grey and white in there to create a moon so I'll just get this on the pouncer just twist it into it so you've loaded it up okay use your white okay get it on there where you want it Okay, you've loaded it up. Now, where are we down here? Get some grey on there. So I'll just smudge that out a bit so I can control what... I only want grey on one half of this moon. Where are we? Something like that, I hope. That's sort of loaded the pouncer up. Yeah. And we'll get... I don't know, where are we? We'll just sort of put something here. Put it on and then give it a bit of a twist just to smear the paint onto it there we go too simple now what I'm going to do is grab oh I can even use my finger see the bit in the middle where we missed I didn't want to keep mucking with that pouncer and ruin it so I'm just gonna grab my finger and just like blend I'll wipe it up a bit and I wouldn't mind a bit of um grey over this side you know there we go that was quite easy quite easy All right, I'm going to grab the rest of this white craft paint just to base up the lower half where I'm going to have the water so as the turquoise won't be so draggy. It works better when it's going onto a white surface. The wet white paint that's already on there. So we'll just get this up to there somewhere just like that and then scoot that in. I'll just, oh, have I wet it enough? I'm just going to wet the brush a tidbit more just so that paint will spread across the canvas because if the tooth canvas is really bone dry and I put that turquoise on it, it's going to sit on it, drag on it and you're going to go, oh, it looks like snot. So I like to condition the area first. That's a, that's a job within itself. You can get colours and add to a surface and work out different ways to prepare that surface whether it's with retarder craft paint or some other color before you put your paint on there and just see how it's working for you and remember how you've done it so when you're doing a painting it's going to work for you okay i know that putting a white base down first is always going to help me colors okay so we'll get our turquoise here i've just wiped my brush i haven't washed it and we pretty much want the water turquoise. See how that went on there beautifully. I should have showed you before I put it, the white on there what, it would have, what would have happened. I should have dried the top a bit more and masked it up, but we'll get by. Now let's just block all this turquoise in. Quite simple, it's just turquoise. We'll get this done up here again, come on.
There we go. Now I'm going to pick up some more white and lighten it up a bit. It is a bit heavy with the turquoise. So I've just got more craft paint and we'll get this in there and lighten that turquoise up a bit. There we go, that wasn't too difficult. I've achieved what I wanted. Yes. Okay, get it all left and right straight. A bit more down here. Now I'll grab some of the, um, where are we down on the palette here? I'm just going to grab some of the cerulean blue because that's the blue I've used. So I'm just going to grab some of that and I just want to get some of this value into the water as well. Just about here. It's not much but it's enough to change it up a bit, okay? some bands of it and then stroke it down. Okay I've just lightly masked up the top of the horizon and I'm grabbing that pouncer again that we use for the moon just to get some paint in there, some white paint, pure white. And then from the moon hit the water and just come down in a straight line. Okay, just like that. Grab your brush you've been using for the water, this one here, and we're just going to lightly pull it through before it dries. There we go. We could probably get a bit more here. We lost it there. All right, I've still got, we'll put a bit more there. There we go, just like that, just slightly. And I'll get the tape off because some people like to see when the tape comes off. There we go. Okay, I've got a flat brush, something I can just chisel in a mountain in the distance there. And I'm using burnt umber. And work out, do you want one on each side or just one on one side? I don't know, so we'll come across the horizon line here and we'll just sort of put a distant mountain. Get the edge of it nice and tight. I don't want it too massive up into the sky there. I mean we're a long way away from it and come off the painting. Now I'll just get the brush upside down and get to the horizon line where it's going to meet the water. Okay. You can dry everything if you want, and if you don't want to do it freehand, then mask it up. I need that paint a little bit more wet because it's breaking up, as you can see. And let's get that over there. Okay, I've given it a bit of a dry now. I've got some white. I want to halve it and get some of it over here and taint it with the brown that I had, the burn umber. Just taint that white. There we go. Now the best way to fluke a good mountain is quite easy. See the, the tip? If anything, you just do a kind of a zigzag to the foreground, okay? So that's what we're going to pretty much do here. We're just going to zigzag I oh, don't get too nervous, Ian, it's all right. There we go, there. And we do the same on the other little one there, okay? Just a zigzag, keep it to one side. There we go. And this can kind of just break up. Same on here, just, I'm using a flat brush, it's something easy. I've dried that mountain, I don't know if I told you, and if I did tell you, well I've just told you again. Just scratch it down. Now if you feel it's a bit too bright, you can add darkness back, okay? But we've just added some 
mountain values on there, eh? And we can probably put some over here as well. Just imagining that went off the painting there. Okay, I've just grabbed a little bit more of the burn umber and I've just teased the bottom back a bit. It's mixed in, it mixed with that lighter colour and the darker colour and made a, like a third colour, but I've just kind of played with it a bit. There we go. And then we can add the pure white. So we'll grab our white on that same brush. I've cleaned it and then we'll just put this some snow on there. Now I haven't dried it. I want to get some snow. Let's start on this side. Just treacling down the mountain like that. Coming within these ridges there. How's that looking? Uh, <laughs> and we'll try and get some in here. Just get snow sitting on it any way you want. Here we go, that'll do me. That will do me. And I want some on here as well. And on this side. We could still see that zigzag ridge we put in there, which is important. Snow's on all those ridges there. Maybe get some over here. Now, I'm just going to pick up some more of the burn umber. It's mixing with the white. It's making its own colour. Because see here, I just feel... No, nah, I buggered that again. So I'm going to grab the pure burn umber now and put that back because I just feel that needed to be a bit darker there. So if you make a mistake, just work with it. Things will be all right. Okay, that moon's dry since I've done it. I'm picking up that white again in that same little brush I used for here because I just want to get like some closer clouds just in front of the moon there. Something like that. How are we looking there? Okay, that'll do. Maybe one coming along here somewhere. Okay, just to finish it off now, I'm going to get some low tacking tape again. I want to get it right on the horizon line here and just put our light hitting the water so we're covering up the mountain there. Is that wet? That's all right. I'll use this low tacking when it's safer <laughs> just so we don't get any up there on the sky. So I'm just going to spray some light hitting the water. So the best thing for this is a good old toothbrush or some brushes that have got flickable hairs on them. Sturdy, sturdy flickable hairs. Something that'll spit. It's like spitting stars. You know when they teach you how they spit stars? Well, we're going to do this. But with the water, the light. And I mainly want to concentrate around just this area here and cone it down, if anything. So. That's why the tape's there. Oh, you big blob of a bugger. Look at that, eh? I'll see if I can... Um... fix that up. I don't know how I'm going to fix it up, but I'm thinking while I'm doing this. I might need to paint a little bit... a little bit wet. It wasn't quite wet enough. Don't have it too wet because the blobs can come out all yucky and mucky. That's better. You don't want them flicking into like little worms, you know. Get your brush reloaded. Oh, I 
that on the tip of the teeth there. Look at that, you can control it. It's like a little, little spray gun, but spraying dots. Beauty nuke, look at that, eh? Hey? Yeah, I like that, eh? Hey? See on these two brushes, it builds up, just slow to back up. And what I might do is grab my brush and just lightly pull this. This is a dry brush, I'll just use this one, I found it. <coughs> I don't know what sort of brush it is. Boom. Nice and straight, that's it, that's all you need to do. It just looks like the light's hitting the water surface. Which is artistic, I suppose, isn't it, eh? Now I've just got a uh, flat filbert, my cat tongue filbert. I've mixed some yellow oxide with the rest of that um, burn umber. And on this corner, I want to create some rocks. So this is just the dark, shadowy nonsense. So don't worry about how neat this is going to look or might look or should look. Get it all dark in there. Get it all dark in there. All dark and work out. I'll, I'll go to about here. And I'll, as long as I've got. Now these are above the water, sitting up a bit like a rock groin jetty type of thing there, okay? I just wanted a bit darker, so I've added some more of the burn umber. And I'll get the distinct rocks that are sitting up. You know in a harbour or a quay where they have all the boats and restaurants? This is like that sort of groin. You're just looking out over the moonlit mountains in the distance there. Mountains. That'll do. Now we'll pick up the yellow ochre. Ochre yellow, yellow oxide. This is the actual colour of the rocks. I think I've got some white. Yeah, we've got some white there as well. Now I've given this a bit of a dry. Now this is the actual rock colour, so we'll we'll get some of these in there. There we go. Leaving some darks in between them, okay? Now if you want to have some of these under the water, you just glaze over it with that turquoise. Now we'll get this reasonable, some big ones there. That'll do. Looks stupid at the moment, but the next colour we put on is what really brings it home. And that next colour is the white. So I'm pretty much just getting it all in the white here. Just to highlight it, not too white highlighted, just enough to show the caramel difference to that. Okay, I've given that a little bit more of a dry, and now we want to highlight that yellow oxide. So you've pretty much got the dark colour underneath, you've got the yellow oxide as the rock, and this colour is highlighting what's in front, what's behind, stuff like that, okay? I do want to get rid of that dark edge there. That's got to be light. If you can get it light. So bring it to the edge there. Here. <laughs> oh golly, I think I've turned it to snot, but she'll be all right. Now just to finish it off, I'm just grabbing some of the burn umber in the turquoise there. Just to get a slight shadow under the mountains there, because it's the ocean, so it's not going to be like a lake reflection, but we'll get some sort of um, shadow going there. I should have done this before I did the um, toothbrush splattering. 
and I'll tell you what, that brush is no good. Where's that flat one I had? I'm going to use the flat brush, here it is here, to pull them down because that round filbert head on it is balking the movements I want to create. So we'll grab this one. Is that too watery? And we'll see how we go. Just something. Just something like that. Okay, I've dried it. Now that does look like it's a bit sitting there, eh? So we're gonna sink it down using some glaze medium. Now there's my glaze. I'll get it in the brush. And just a little bit of white. Not too much. It's gonna turn this glaze into a translucent film over our water there, okay? Yeah, that's all right. And from about here, I'd say. And then we can use this to, because see the glaze is going to stick out on top of the water, see? You'll notice this. How do I know? Because I've done it before and noticed it when it dried. And this can act like those, you know those lines you normally put on with a, or with a knife, but sometimes they're really loud and cartoony? Well this is a good way to just sit them on there and they'll, they're not so loud. Let's try some over here, right? Eh? Just scallopy, get your brush chiselled so they're not all over the place. And these, you don't have to worry about it if they're going too crazy because they sit down and soften. It's just light hitting the water as well. It's very subtle. We can probably add a little bit more white with that glaze if we want. Just to put some down here. Oh yeah, look at that, beautiful. Now, when I take a photo of this, you'll see just how light these are. Now, that reflection of the, the mountains, you know, over there, you, is sunken. The water's on top. I feel that the water's on top of it now. Okay? And that's what good glaze can do for you. That'll do. Okay, let's sign this and then we can whack a frame on it. And while I sign it, I'll just get you to check out the links in the description below. And if you're new here, share, like and subscribe. And I want to thank all my patrons who support my content here every month. Thank you very much to everybody. And just remember, all my tutorials are available for purchasing. There's a link in the description below to show you what's available. and you pay for them through PayPal. There's a donate PayPal link there also. Okay, I'll put a frame on here. There we go, that don't look too shabby, does it? We've got a beautiful rocky surface here in the foreground. Just got some beautiful harbour type of water, bit of a distant mountain, sun setting evening sky, and a bit of an element of a moon up there as well, eh? Just remember, everything there you can do it and if you feel you can't quite do it it just takes practice that's how easy it is okay i never got here just like that i practice to get the way i paint and you can do the same too if you feel you can't quite get there all right if you like what i'm doing tell your friends and family but if you don't like what i'm doing you be sure to tell everybody all right all the best goodbye good luck and good on you